I realized that I, I wasn't black. <laughs> I was a human being. You, you know the feeling when you're here and you're walking down the street and how people grab their curses across the street when they see a black person coming? Well, that was gone. And, and it, <laughs> but, but the thing is, I, in Ghana, it, it, I don't know if it's the same way now, but you could not buy land. The land belongs to the people. But now the chief can give you land and you can use it for as long as you live, but you can't pass it on to your children. I had no problem with that. I got a nice piece of land that I, while I was there. And when I was getting ready to come back, the people wanted to know if I'm coming back, what am I going to bring? So, yeah, you know, you're coming, well, what are you bringing for us? But when I came back, I went to, uh, I saw that I could get land, so I went to John Deere, the tractor company, and asked them about getting tractors. They said they would give me tractors and send a mechanic with me back mm. to, to work the land. But you know, they're going to get a percentage of, of the food that we grow. And I couldn't find people that would come together with me to get money together to produce this. And I am just want to put that out, that if that's still opening, food is a very important thing in Africa. And the land is there, and they, they're not working it. Most people have six acres that they work, where they take care of their family and everything on six acres. But the man is there. And I had one friend that came back from Great Britain. He brought one tractor. He had one man running the tractor and taking care of it. And all the people in the village gave them his land, their land for him to work with his tractor. So they produced more food, and each of the families got a portion of the, of the crops. If we come to Africa, we should bring something. We should bring something that's going to look the people and, you know. Oh, yeah. Thank you. That's, 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 that's what I'm at. I'm going to give you the floor. First, I'd like to extend my thanks to the Shrine of Black Madonna for hosting this event, for knowing love to inviting me, to the panelists, to musicians, to everyone here. We are what unity looks like, and I'm grateful to you all. Um, I have three questions I will state. Well, I'll pose the first one, and then I'll wait for another time to ask the other two. Um, the response from the brother, Gabriel. Yes. The, the two brothers who've been in Africa touched on the heart of the question I was going to pose to the brother with Nigerian roots. Um, in response to my colleague's question, what is our first step? He said, love ourselves. So, a chain is as strong as its weakest link. Right. So, when we say what our, what, loving ourselves is the first step, we have to be clear on what love looks like. Because as you said, we've been so Eurocent um, Europeanized. We are not clear in our, okay, so we have to clarify what that looks like. Um, I could give my idea of an answer, but I'd, I'd like to hear from the brother, um, or from any of the panels, whoever chooses to respond, loving ourselves is the first step. What does loving ourselves look like? What do we have to do in order to do that in a, um, a genuine way, an African way? So, I think that it's, it's you know, I, I think you rightly stated about the, uh, the language barrier. It's, it's difficult to explain love and for me to explain love in European terms um, and using European words. Um, it's more of a reflection of what we do and, and, and what we allow to happen to ourselves. Um, we see love in the way that this brother is holding his child. That is love right there. Um, we see love in um, and people who are willing to lay down their lives, and people who have laid down their lives for their own respect and self-determination. Um, so it's not just a, it's not something that I can break down into a definition. It's how we live each and every day. It's love. Uh -huh. But, I mean, because we talk about respect, we talk, we use certain words here. Um, and they don't have meaning. Like, 
It's just like, you know, it's, it's, G, it's GMO. Like everything is GMO. You know, everything is, is genetically modified. So, you know, for us to try and, and describe respect, you know, I respect myself and then I'm going to work for somebody else. Nah, that's not respecting yourself where I come from. You know, we talk about um, I, I love my mother and I never go and see her. That's not, I mean, there's, it's just certain things that, you know, it's, it's, it's actually, what they say, actually speak loud in the words type of thing. So, at the end of the day, when we are, I'm going to put this in a way that, uh, unfortunately, I, I think that some of us will understand, but the way that we feel for white people sometimes, when we feel that for ourselves, some of y'all, uh, hey, I don't know, I don't know. You know, no, I'm not, if, it, if, it, if it's a, you know, be a duck and let it roll off your back and it don't apply to you, but it does apply to some of us. You know, we, we, we fear that white man and we're afraid to say it. Because when he, when he walks down the street and he's brutalizing our sisters and our brothers, and he's pulling guns on our people, we're all Oh, but we say we love ourselves. All right. All right. Demonstration, demonstration. Anyone else? You know, as he was saying, I think it comes back to understanding your true root. You know, like we say we love, but then our actions and our words don't, you know, follow that, you know. You, you have kids that will text you as opposed to call you. You have kids that won't call you, say they love you when they need you. You know, so it has to be a rethinking and an emphasizing. You know, to not only us, but how we express it to our kids, you know. Um, like the brother holding this child here. My son has his first child, and he's very nurturing, and he said he's going to treat him with all the love and respect that he was raised with. So, but it's, it's more than action. Like you said, it's not in European terms. It's hard to put it in words, you know. So you have to... If I don't understand what love is, I should be able to see it in you and your actions. That's right. If I don't know how to love, I should be able to see it in how you treat me. Ah, sure. Because you have to demonstrate it to a person, not tell a person. That's right, that's right. You know, you have to be love, you know. Like I said, whatever your spirituality is, you have to be all that you say your God is. If your God is love, you have to be love. If your God is compassion, you have to be compassion. If you were created in the likeness and image of that energy source that created all, take the responsibility for your choices. Be the full example of everything that creation is. Make it clear. Make it clear. As far as um, talking about what we should be doing next after the protests and whatnot, and piggybacking out the way we plan the quote unquote um, public servants that are here to serve and protect us from our politicians done to our police officers. What I think we should actually do is get uh, practical education on the law and different civil engineering trades and how to acquire and own our property. That way we can actually build our own infrastructure instead of, you know, ours but relying on them to handle stuff or to do favors for us and them on our, on our behalf. Because it's like, if we was to know and stand for our rights, you know, we wouldn't have to fear um, being brutalized and being shot and stuff like that. Because we'd be able to, when we go to court and fight for these rights, and we would be able to speak their language and understand how they actually screwing us over. Right. And they would actually prevent that and that would actually humble them. Because the same law that we're bound by, the same law they're bound by. And it's more worse for them because they're not protected by the things like the Constitution that protect us. But they, they are here to protect that Constitution by oath. And if they violate that oath, you know, they give their perjury and treason. You know? So when we're able to stand no no like the back of our hand, how to stand for our rights. Stand firmly on it, you know. They would actually put them back in more in their place. And I'm saying, um, organizing 
land trust, you know, uh, organizing a core of engineers, you know what I mean, plumbing, electrical, HVAC, things that we actually need, having, you know, people design clothes and clothe ourselves, farmers to feed ourselves. And, and, and when we go to these, um, these marches and these rallies, instead of just being angry and in our feelings all the time, we should, be, you know, use that as a networking opportunity, you know, to actually, um, you know, get these things started. You know, have um, resources online. How, like, here now, we should, you know, we can have like gatherings like how we have now to actually teach these things. Have a presenter on different aspects of the law, you know, or, or you know, open up trade schools, you know, affordable trade schools and whatnot, and give grants and scholarships to teach our children how to stand and do these things. You know, that way we, you know, just marching just to look cute on TV or whatever. You know what I mean? Ashe. <laughs> Yeah. Because there's a difference between what the actual laws are in this country that we have to follow and the code statutes and regulations that they use to oppress us. You know, there's a big difference. And in my coming in, I'm learning about it now, but my coming into it is like all these code statutes and regulations we don't actually have to follow or really listen to per se because they're not a law. We just think they're law because of the way they enforce them. You know, but when we start to actually question their authority and challenge their jurisdiction on us, you you will get a whole lot of different reaction on them. You know, and when we go to court and we can we sue the government for violating our rights and taking back their money, that's actually injecting them and affecting them where it hurts. So they will be more inclined to listen to us and to respect our being. You know, that's all I have to say. Uh, greetings, all. My name is Archie Lanier. The Pro African Education Foundation. I would like to comment partly to the issue of the reason we are here, perhaps, is the sense of gaining some power. It is a power struggle, to say the least. And the first is to get to know why you feel powerless. Then, as the brother suggested, you've got to prepare your own plan of attack. If you don't have a plan for your life, Others will put you apart of their plan. Right. This is war. Unless you have, have prepared yourself to be engaged in warfare, we have been shadow slavery products, and the oppressive system don't want to lose you. You've been making money. It's economics. So if you're not prepared to die for what you believe in, all this talk is immaterial and waste. Now, as a part of getting your own plan together, then you start looking for like-minded people who are in line with your values and skill sets to be a, uh, I, I use more normally, my fingers can individually do a lot of things. And they don't make it operate without each other. But I, I often find us doing independent stuff without, you know, when I pull my fingers together, it's going to hurt you a lot more than one finger at a time. And, and that's where we have to find like-minded sources of energy, intelligence, skills, and bring them to bear as one goal in mind. Oh, I, I, I should have told y'all, also told you, you know, even though I was born in Louisiana, but the more I learn about Africa, Africa is here. It's not, we were brought only, some of us was brought, our ancestors, only a few of them were brought here, but Africans were already part of this land. So, as you say, you want to go back to Africa, well, you hit Africa. If you look at the bigger picture, and now just use your skills to make it a positive influence where you are. You can create your own serenity if you will stand up for it. But if you want somebody else to take the blame for your deliverance, or the credit for your deliverance, it's really about what you put for yourself to liberate yourself. Your mind, first, your value system will determine what your behavior will be. And you can't change people's behavior unless you change what they think about themselves. Mm -hmm. As you said, we need to love ourselves. Now, how do you know? How do you know? Well, we're talking about appreciating many people in America, talking about they are searching for themselves. Mm -hmm. But then they don't like what they find. Uh -huh. 
Okay. Loving yourself has to do with understanding that the Creator has put you here, brought you through all kind of childhood diseases, all kind of American trauma through slavery and oppressive nature, and you're still here. Surely the Creator had some purpose for you. Find your purpose for blessing this place and the people you come in contact with. said my first word in Nigeria. But when I went as an adult, when I got off the plane, you know how they say you want to kiss the ground? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I felt like I was at home. My name didn't sound funny to people that in jail, it was just home. So that, that was the most valuable thing to me is that that is home. Um, in terms of reaching out to, to my brothers and sisters here, that's the work that I do every day. Um, so, um, you know, for those, we have a mentoring program at Best Academy. We work with 600 students every week, um, providing mentoring, rites of passage training, and um, you know, we just show love. You know, that's the thing. That's the thing that changes people. Because uh, when you, uh, when I when I go into a school and somebody is is uh, is acting out, you know, fighting or whatever. And I can kind of resonate with them and not reject them and just show love. That's what changes everything. So, um, so you know, we don't have to, we can't look down upon our brothers and sisters because they are us. You know, and so I, it's not an us versus them situation. You know, if, I, if I'm going into it thinking I have all the answers, that's the Western way of looking at things. You know, I have something to learn from them just as they have something to learn from me. And so um, we go and we say each one, each one, each one, each one. So. Excellent. And to be a direct answer, um, the most important thing to myself and what I was looking to find in Africa was you know, the, the family values that uh, once, my family, majority of my family were born in Jamaica and then once we started leaving, we got dispersed all over the place. Uh, returning, to, uh, returning to the African continent, returning to that energy, really just uh, showed me what family is about and how family structure and operate. The fact that uh, some of the uh, systems that work for our ancestors, we still practice in countries like Ghana, is incredible because those systems keep our family together. When we're here, we're dealing with courts, lawyers, judges, and everybody that don't have our best interests, and all they're trying to do is just get financial resources and put right. different people in the system. Um, the thing that I appreciate is that when you, you know, when you go to certain homes and you're there, you get to analyze and see how family communicate. And then if you, if there's issues or things that are this, you know, there, there's ways, there's there's ways to really solve certain issues, and that's what I saw. My whole time during African continent, just, just you know, just learning and acknowledging, 
And that's one of the biggest reasons why I spent so much time trying to connect and make moves because I saw those authentic values of what I used to hear about the South before I got here. It uh, still exists in Africa. Um, the, the same as those cultural energy that you know, growing up in Jamaica remind me of until, you know, you know, until, you know, until all the different uh, technology and all the different madnesses come around to where people lose their culture. And even though you still have that same thing, in, you know, same madness in, in different uh, African countries, uh, you know, whether it's the, the TV and people watching reality shows and so on, you know, that's part of the detriment. But in general, the family structure is incredible, and it's something that's unbroken. We talk about countries like Ghana; it's dominated by the Ashanti uh, kingdom, and you know, in certain other countries, you have the same thing. You have that one dominant culture that refused to be taken over by Western culture. Um, so that's you know the way I've, I've seen. It. And uh, second, you want to know how do people get involved in these things. It's uh, a good start is always your the closest thing to you, um, which is your community-based based organization or just doing things within your family, like starting small business or study groups and things to just really just get us uh, connected. Um, one of the things I have to say is that there is a extended family and being as one, we have African ties in every country in the world. Uh, whether I'm in Brazil, in Panama, like I said, the thing about being people of color is, when you get out of the country, they don't know you are not from that country. They think you're from some other part of the country <laughs> until you don't speak the language. <laughs> whether it be Spanish or Portuguese or whatever. Uh, uh, Brazil is the second largest or one of the largest places where the slaves were, and they have gained more things, but they still have some of the same issues that we have here in America. Some of these same issues of not loving yourself, not being respected, the darker you are, no matter what country I go to, the darker you are, they will hold you down. Even in Panama, Brazil, or whatever. So it's a community-based thing, and you see the Africans, pulling together in Brazil, Africans pulling together in uh, Panama and every place else I go. So there is a base and there is a family and a deep connection as being of that one that we are and we represent. Like I said, we were planted in all these other countries to express freedom, humanity, and that you are a free person. That's why in every country they had was the slavery revolt. Because we were the demonstration that freedom is our humanity and freedom is our choice. So we represent. Thank you. I also would like to tap onto that uh, as an extension. Uh, it's not as expensive as most people think as it is to go and travel. Um, I have I've gone personally out of my own pocket and I make it very plain whether I am contracting services and doing my own thing or whether I find a need to make a little bit more income by uh, going to work for somebody for an extended period of time, but I let them know I will never spend 12 months on this soil, um, consecutive months. I might always leave uh, for at least one month. Um, and what I've experienced, no matter which country I've gone to, whether it's been Colombia, whether it's been Ghana, the Congo, South Africa, every single place I've been, I was received into a home within two days. And I stayed with a family uh, for one month and two months and was fully integrated into that community. And they said, welcome home. And they treated me as their own. And I felt like, oh, this may be, you know, maybe this is not going to happen or I'm going to go anyway just because I want to explore. But the amount of love that was shown to me just because I was a sister across the diaspora, it brought me to tears every single time. And each time I said, I will bring somebody back to come and visit you, to share that with you, because they said, we never come. We don't come. They don't see us. And like, you know, in Colombia, I went all the way up into the mountains to visit. I know you all heard about the Quilombos and the Maroons, but there's also a space in South America called Palique. And they speak a key Congo-based language. They killed so many Europeans when they got off the ship that they went up into the mountains, and they still do not speak Spanish to this day. Um, they are getting televisions, and they are now starting to learn Spanish and things like that. But that was the group that told me, you can't stay here. I'm sorry. You have to be married to somebody here, or you have had to be born here to sleep here or 
tonight. Um, I was still taken in by a brother who had just come back from the U.S. and said, I'm doing my studies and I want to practice my English, but I had to stay on the outskirts. And I had nothing but respect for that. But I'll tell you, that was the most touching thing to me, and it made me want to make sure that I had a place for them. So I have put my resources together to purchase a home here in Atlanta, regardless if I leave or whether I stay or whether I continue to explore, to show them that same love, because I know that that's not the same reception they're going to receive when they get here. So that's one of the things that we can also do because if you are receiving that love and that exchange, you should also be willing to give that back. Um, I, I do have a slight note before I take the next questions. Um, the silent auction proceeds in the back, this is just a reminder that we do have a silent auction in the back. Um, some of the items include wellness, full body massage, a basket of children's books, a side of Shakur's books and CDs, an African tablecloth set, and more. So please go back and visit uh, Sister Ikena um, and look at the things that we have here for the silent auction and please participate so we can continue doing things like this for you. All right? Yes, All right. Uh, the next question was here, then here. The brother with the red jacket on he said several times, that would be you, brother. He said several times, I'm a camelback or something. Now, before he said that, I would have said piggyback. Now, this is a very, um, perhaps, inconsequential example, but it goes to show how even me, with my lofty ideas about my Afrocentricity, what have you, I am still Europeanized. See? And something like that, so, something so very simple as describing, um, like metaphorically des describing something in a way that's closer to our roots, it does something to the consciousness. You see? So I'm using myself as an example. Um, the brother from who stayed in, in Africa and Ghana 20 years, he touched on the heart of the matter. In fact, um, this is not my question, I'm just going to put a capstone on the question. Um, loving ourselves, what does that look like? I think it was answered, but some things cannot be overemphasized. In fact, if they can be, then they should be. And this is really one of those that we have to have profound clarity on. What does loving ourselves look like? Um, if you ask a Negro, a Negro would say, well, I got to um, cut my colleague's throat so I can get, get um, a, a corporate position. Or um, if you were part of me, a nigga might say, well, I would get a, a OZ, you know? Or uh, someone else might say, well, I would go to church's chicken, get me a big deluxe set, you know? We have different ideas about what loving ourselves is because we are fragmented and walked by sure. our European conditioning. So as the brother said, when he was African 20 years, he became Africanized. He became Africanized. And so his view of loving himself, I would suspect, I would presume to say, has that clarity. So that's it. Sankofa, returning to ourselves, is how we learn to love ourselves. Sankofa is the pebble in the pool that is us. And everything that ripples from that will be equally as wholesome if we have that as a core. That's how we learn to love ourselves. My question is very um, brief. Um, so in the handout, I saw something about how we have to encourage or use corporate investment in order to um, uh, forward this, this process. It's in, the, in the hand I was given, so get this corporate investment um, as part of the way as advancing this, in, this endeavor. So I'm wondering, again, it changes the storm as a huge limit. What corporate investment are we talking about? Thank you. I'm not sure about what you're talking about. I think the question was about the handout. Yeah. The clarity on, on which handout? It says at the bottom on the last paragraph. Oh, the handout is here on the yeah, table. I think we have one in front of us. I think we'll, I'll give them a, a, a moment to read through it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take um, another question just because we are pressed for time. I'm going to give them a moment to read through it. Corporate is the second from last paragraph. Okay. Corporate is possible to reinvest. I'm wondering what you think that is. Okay. Well, uh, brother, that's true. That's, that happened to be my handout for Pro African Educational Foundation. Corporate investment. Every corporation still have a policy where they reinvest their funds back into the local community. Well, I want to be their legs, arms, and eyes to get their dollars to help our people. 
and I have to do the right things to make sure I'm meeting their goals or their value system. So I have to tailor make my program to see if I can honor their dollars to help our people. That's what that is. And we got to be conscious of the fact that they're giving money away to a whole lot of people and groups and organizations. I just want some of that money economically to help our people. There you go. I'm gonna, is this a comment on top of it, or is it a question? Oh, there's, a, there's another question that was on the board. Oh, is this a comment? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Well, really, just to, as you said, that's clearly why you do it. We had a word we thought we made up, mm -hmm. enculturate. Mm -hmm. And one, the more we used it, the more we used it. Then eventually it was online, and we actually found the word enculturate. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we thought we made it up was because of that. We say we still have a European mindset, and we say the same thing. Oh, my back killing me. That's, that's all. Those things have to be eliminated. Instead of incorporating certain things, there's, we have to have a differentiation between incorporate mm -hmm. and enculturate. So that was the whole concept. It, it goes back into language as well, right. where, where you're coming from, because if you don't have that frame of reference, then you're, you're confined to the language in which you've been uh, taught, and then sometimes we find ourselves at a loss for the word because we are thinking from a different mindset that we've been put into this space of us. But give them. I'm going to take his question, then this Bible's question here, and then... Okay. Um, yeah, I just need to be emphatic. You can't bother with the devil. That's all I'm going to say. Um, for the board, um, I don't know if this was covered or not, but I did come in a little late, and that's my fault. But um, my mother went to uh, Ghana, or uh, she was in Africa for a minute, and she was kind of overwhelmed by the, um, the masses of humanity that were poor. And uh, one of the brothers that mentioned uh, bringing a John Deere over kind of rang in my head a little bit. And it's like, so after we get all our skills together, then like what can what are like the five top things that we, that we can bring that will that we can give that we can you know I don't want to come someplace empty-handed. What can I, what am I going to be able to bring to the people? What are like the five top things that you think that we should have to bring to help all the masses that are there that will be looking at us? You know, because I kind of feel like when you go to Africa, people are. You know, you're from America, and people are kind of like, you know, like their hands out a little bit, maybe some. You know, I don't know. I may be illusion. I'd like to point of clarity just a little bit. Um, when you speak about going and giving, before before we pose the question, is there a particular country? Because the continent is very vast, and there are different yeah. needs for different. Well, it would probably be the most logical country, which would be the country that would be offering to the citizens. Going to so set that, something up. Okay. So that might be whatever those countries are. Ghana, so, I do know, has actually done that. That's maybe Ghana. Mm -hmm. So what can I bring? Like, as far as you're saying, get these skills so I can assimilate, but then what skills do I need that I can help that are going to help that the people to embrace it? That's perfect. I'm going to just looking at my uh, tour book and looking at the uh, different things that we have in there. Uh, we talk about uh, Africa, the final frontier for savvy investors. For those of us that want to invest um, in the land, but as far as our uh, skills itself, you know, when we talk about sustainability, you know, you're talking about being able to use your hands to build and take care of everything that you need and using the science that you learned in your, your mind to put it in place. So, um, yeah, it's, it could be, you can number it down to one or two, uh, you can bring a various amount of skills, but um, Literally, you just think about all of the skills it took to build this um, you know, this our nation and to develop it at the level it's at. Uh, and not saying that you're, you're using the same methods because we're talking about sustainable and this nation wasn't built uh, sustainably. So uh, you, you need the same you know, same skills, you know, engineering, science, um, but more important, if you can use your hands to learn how to build a sustainable home and all the methods that go into it, that's a good start. Um, using your hands to rework the land. Um, and there's some things that you don't really need a lot of skills for, to take um, equipment and you know, dig and you know, get to work. Okay, so that's something you can share. You're saying that's what you can share. The people that are 
in me, I mean, I mean, is there a, I'm feeling like, you know, I'm going to go there and have something to help. Those. Yes, and it's, it's very honorable, and at the same time, it's not as simple. Um, yeah. it, to give a simple explanation, schools are always a great start, um, and the things that deal with uh, being a part of a, uh, Contributing to the you know to the school, whether it's uh, maintaining the property, or you know being that that male figure that uh, to help take the the children to a different level as far as the leadership, uh, it's uh, you know it's many things. So it's just really based on the individual and what they're open to. Uh, and then, uh, unfortunately, sometimes we talk general, but individuals also also have to pinpoint on some of the general things that we talk about. Um, well, I was going to say. Um, we want to be careful the words we use. Um, we talk about poverty and people who are poor and need. Um, uh, because many of the solutions and answers are already there. Um, I think the main in impediment to um, true self determination on the continent is in, comes in governance. It's not a lack of skills, it's not a lack of resources. I mean, obviously, you know, Africa as a continent is the most resource rich continent. Um, you know, every cell phone that we use and that's the material that comes from. So, so we're talking about governance. Um, and so that's the real issue right there, the level of um, corruption. And I don't mean in terms of stealing resources, but I mean in terms of selling out to the European interests um, and, and the Chinese interests is what's really keeping the continent from thriving because um, Africa has the gifts. And so if you have someone that doesn't have resources, it's not because there's not resources around them, it's because they don't have access to those resources. So um, I think we want to be careful. I think one of the, the first question that was asked about was, was um, how do we go there, or how do we go any place and not um, disrupt? Um, because a lot of times when we're going over there um, with education, the educational system, we go with the European education system that teaches them to be individualistic and to not work together and it breaks down the family. So um, I think that if we uh, if we take that piece out, you all right, fam? Yeah, we are. Okay. I'm on play. I quit school because they had recess. Continue. Bye, bro. So I was just saying, um, you know, that we just need to to recognize that the solutions and the, the resources are already there. Um, it's really just a question of a lot of times the leadership of the countries don't want to leave. What's going on in the Gambia right now? What's going on in different countries where the leadership doesn't want to leave? Even, you know, I, I know people are not going to like this, but with Mugabe. You know, Mugabe is, is on the decline in terms of his mental capacity. And what he's doing, what's going on in Zimbabwe, the people that are living there, they're fleeing to South Africa. Because you have to take suitcases full of money to buy stuff. So it's not a question of whether Mugabe is a revolutionary, it's not a question of whether Mugabe has done great things for